Hey guys, so it's been a really busy few weeks at work and I haven't been able to make it out to the farm. All the pups are sleeping inside, so I'm gonna try to whisper. I needed to do a little update with Janelle, so I tried to do a Skype video and I recorded the whole conversation, so I figured I'd do a little Q&A with her. We wanted to talk about Patreon and say thank you to everybody, so check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I wanna try to do this probably once a week for the next few weeks until I can actually get out to the farm and hang out in person. I miss everybody so much. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like this little update. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you soon. I miss you guys so much. I haven't seen you in weeks. Um, we miss you. Uh, I'm dying for an update. I know your life has been crazy just outside of the farm, let alone everything on top of the farm. Let's focus on... Uh, Likewise. Let's focus on the chicken update right now because we've got two new residents and I think that that's, a, that's something we need to really cover tonight. I'll introduce you. This is Peep. She is gigantic now. Oh my uh, gosh. She's a big girl. You can see she doesn't have her right eye uh, and she has a pretty severe cross beak. She, she, she would probably poop on my computer because that's, that's Peep. I'm gonna put her back safely quick before we chat. And then this is cheap and she's massive. They oh. both are really big. Her joints were completely swollen. She couldn't walk, um, which is why she came to us. So she's doing fantastic. They both are and they're super sweet because they've been hand, hand fed and held. And, um, and they're, staying, they're staying in the house with you right now, right? Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're in the farmhouse, <laughs> just like, um, all of the goats have been, and oh yeah, uh, it's this like where they, they they all begin. Is it in the same room that they that? Yeah, uh, yeah. So so I mean, well, it's varied. It's like whatever vacant room that you know my kid can't get into is, is the room. <laughs> where it's sort of like the medical wing, because we're eventually gonna have that in the barn. Um, but right now, I just personally feel like I'm able to keep the, uh, a better eye on everybody. Um, you know, because I'm I'm watching them. 24 7. So. We really wanted to talk about why Mockingbird decided to take these two chicks in. It's important for people to know where they came from, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Maybe the yeah. practices can stop someday. But anyway, do you want to do you want to fill in like how it all began? Like kind of like started yeah. with a phone call, right? Yeah, and it's been a really it's been a tough situation for us as a board, you know, and and the volunteers that are involved in making these decisions because we are. Um, you know, every single day I was just saying to you that this morning, you know, we, we got a phone call about a pig and then yesterday uh, about a calf. These guys, when we just, we didn't really decide to take them. We, we really just, there was no other alternative. The short story is, you know, last year I walked into one of the, the large um, box stores, like the farm stores, to get some feed and shavings last year. And I, it just kind of, you know, it was chick days where they had a bunch of baby chicks and ducklings and in the store and everybody, you know, that thought they were so cute and they're, they are cute and they're super chirpy and cute and hanging out. But I was the, the rescuer in me is thinking there's no way that all of these chicks probably get shipped to this store uninjured or, or, you know, not sick. So I asked the manager uh, right off the bat, like, Hey, what's the protocol for, for any chicks that, that show up here injured and kind of what is the process and thankfully you know they were really honest and wonderful and 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 they were just straight up like there is no protocol there just is no protocol if they show up here um sick or injured and we can't sell them we call them so uh that's the term for killing a chicken they they dispatch the chicken in the back they just have a an employee take them in the back and, and they literally break their necks. And I'm not trying to be sensationalist, but those are literally the words that they used. After that happened last year, they called us about a, a baby chick that had a slipped tendon. We only had that chick for about six hours and that chick had passed away. So it had already probably been extremely dehydrated. So we didn't even have the chance to get it to a vet. But anyways, um, this year we got called about Peep. So she was um, flown from a large hatchery out west uh, at four days old, came to this box store. They called us because she had a severe cross beak that you saw. She never developed her right eye, so she's blind on one side and has the cross beak and um, wasn't eating properly. There was just no other option for her. It was either we take her or, or that's it. So we took her, and uh, I spent a couple of days 
um, training her how to eat from a straw. And if you follow us on, on Facebook or Instagram, there's a short video that you can see of her learning how to eat. And um, eventually she came around and she's huge and grown and amazing. And then a couple, I don't know, maybe a week or so later, we got a call about another chick that couldn't walk and she was extremely deficient and like seven different um, vitamins and took her to the vet. We spent over $300 to get her x-rayed um, to make sure that there were no fractures. And it turned out to just luckily be a, 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 an extreme, could, could have been a fatal vitamin deficiency. So with she got some shots so to get like right into her blood and then supplemental nutrition by liquid form by me every two hours. <laughs> and yeah. and now they're both great. When you called me about the second one, it, it, it made sense to me, right? Because mm -hmm. the two are kind of helping each other right now. And a thousand, a thousand percent. At this age, you know, everything bonds in fear, even humans. And so you go through a traumatic experience and it's, I'm not surprised that they bonded, but it's better for them all around. It's better for their mental health. It's better for them to keep their temperatures steady because they, they get together like a little flock and they can maintain temperature better. Yeah. And then they get to go out in the world together. If they weren't saved, they would have just been discarded. Their necks would have been broken and, and yeah. tossed aside. Really what we're trying to drive home is we really shouldn't be breeding these chicks in the first place and sending them to box stores from this, you know, like don't, we shouldn't even be supporting that kind of thing because, because then people are going to pick up all the happy, healthy ones. And then the, the ones that aren't, I mean, sure someone could argue that, well, that's just nature taking its course, but we're kind of forcing, we're forcing <laughs> nature here, right? I mean, we're forcing these animals to be shipped nationwide. Yeah, this hatchery that they came from, um, luckily the folks, um, th the first store that I was talking about that told us, you know, last year a little bit about the process, they were wonderful, but these, these chicks came from a different store where um, we have just grown to have a, a, a phenomenal connection and resource over there with an employee who just her heart is is beautiful and she went from being the person who was asked to dispatch these chicks to now the person who's saying no I'm actually going to spend my time at work caring for these sick animals until I can get them what they need these guys came from a massive massive hatchery out west I won't even name the um the state because it's very easily Googleable, um, and we don't we don't want to throw anybody yeah we don't want to throw anybody under the bus for doing the right thing but we do this is this has become a huge mission for us at Mockingbird because um, it's just not something that's talked about it's all it's it was sad. a sad yeah. discovery you know it's awful and 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 think of how many stores are out there and they have a couple months of these chick days in this country it's mil mil millions millions of chickens at four days old two days old are shipped across the country for these stores well that leads me to the next thing not only chickens but didn't you just get a call last week they also have ducklings and this this duckling showed up off the truck and and couldn't walk and so um of course without having eyes on it we, we didn't know what was going on so i had mentioned that i could come in and you know take a look and and grab the duckling and bring him back to Mockingbird when I was, when I got out of work. And at that point, um, I had gotten another call that the duck had passed away. So employees were very just, you know, there's, there's no education around this. So the duckling didn't get water, probably didn't get fed and, and it passed away. Yeah. Just, uh, and it's not, you know, it's not just chickens, it's, it's ducks. It's, I mean, what else do they sell these places? I don't yeah. even, I don't even want to know. <laughs> um, now, Let's uh, let's just talk really quick about, I mean, it's springtime, mm -hmm. temperatures are warming up. How are all the other animals doing? I, I know that you're busy trying to like proactively care for everybody. In the spring and the fall, we go through a whole process. We do like a deep clean in the, in the spring, especially in all the paddocks and everything. We're hauling out a lot of stuff from the winter months and uh, it's time to deworm everybody. So we, everybody gets dewormed. It's a very lengthy process because we have nine different species and subspecies of animals here. Everybody's on a strict schedule by weight, by a certain dewormer and all that. Have you had any help doing this? You've, have you had to do it all yourself? It gets easier in those summer months because we're not dealing with snow and ice and frozen things. And right now it's tough because we don't have our 
John Ted here at least once a week, but um, our our amazing volunteers, Lauren and Andy, they're here once a week and or anytime we ask them to be. Um, we're starting to, after this Sunday, we have close to, I don't know, seven to 10-ish people that are coming Sunday to help with a bunch of stuff. And so we're, that, that's kind of when we're going to start our volunteer orientation. We've got a couple folks who've really decided to, that they want to be on board and we're just sort of stepping back and more, Just more like, than Lauren and Andy. We got some, some new possible new additions. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. So, so excited to hear about. Like, I can't wait. Yeah, some Syracuse people, which is some like really great because you you know that's far away. We're excited and we need it. We need it really bad because you know I obviously work a lot, but with, you know, if somebody can go pick up feed one day and then the next day, like we just, we just kind of keep things in rotation and the, you know, Janelle, the, the, the people are out there. They, they want to help. And, and yeah. you've provided the, I mean, you've provided the land and, and honestly, like 99.98921 <laughs> of Mockingbird is all of your hard work. And I mean that, like all of the research, all of the uh, lawyering, various lawyerings. I mean, that's all, <laughs> that, that's all you. And I'm really excited to, to see that people are, uh, that people are seeing Mockingbird and follow yeah, along like and like, come on, the heartbeat, the heartbeat is... We got to talk about Aaron's fundraiser. Oh my God. And how he raised over $3,000 playing video games on, I mean, I I don't can't. think I slept so well than that night when I tuned in around like, I think, I don't know, 1am and I just could not, he's just like going at it. He's, you know, everyone's just like giving him a hard time and it was just so awesome. And, and Aaron, right, has been, and his family, has, they have been our biggest, I would say our biggest form of fundraising. I mean, yeah. every time there's a, a birthday or um, an anniversary or yeah, anything. a child is being born. <laughs> He's definitely someone I'm, I'm glad I met. We, we just been, we traveled the world as a couple of vegans. So we were salad and French fry vegans for a long time together playing music. And Every chance he gets, like you said, they're having a child, so they use that as a reason to yeah. raise three thousand dollars for Mockingbird. And if like our followers didn't see that, Aaron live streamed because he owns a uh, like a a comics like a games and comics store in Pennsylvania, and he live streamed playing these like really th these games that people are. I could not believe how many people were watching his stream. And anyways, he took all these just different like. Um, tasks and like uh challenges and ultimately blew through all of his goals and now the first month that his child's going to be born he has to have i'm pretty sure it's a green mohawk and like a 70s mustache for an entire month and that is the month that his child's going to be born so all the pictures all because of mockingbird <laughs> yeah I, I, huge huge thank you to aaron for everything that he's done i i yeah. feel like i owe him my entire we life we have a special gift coming to to them that, yes, that okay. I, it's Ooh. not. Can't we, talk we, about. It. We're not. We're hush. It's, we're, a, special, it's a special. Yes, it's a special. <laughs> uh, the last thing I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to talk about the Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I posted last Mockingbird Monday that I was going to be doing an update video with you, and I asked people to give me some questions to ask, and yeah. uh, I have two. We got two of them so far. So Adrian wanted to know. How do you find the animals or how do the animals find you? I thought that was a really good question because such a good one. Different ways the animals find Mockingbird, right? It it and it doesn't ever stop. <laughs> no, they're still trying. They're still, still trying. Um well here's the thing, Adrian. So my phone number is my personal phone number and also the farm's phone number and my private practices phone number. So it never stops ringing. Um we found Bovi walking down the middle of like the road. <laughs> Oh, and and tried to find where she came from, but it was in the middle of absolutely nowhere. So, literally, they find us. Hart found us. Hart showed up at the door and just never left. We work with a bunch of other sanctuaries and rescue operations um, because not you know not not just one sanctuary can do it all. We're all very limited in our resources and our land, and so. Um, here at Mockingbird, we're very, very supportive of all of the other sanctuaries around us, and we're extremely respectful of um, others' knowledge. 
we work with six or seven different veterinarians and, and experts in the field, specifically Rosemary Farm Sanctuary. They are all equine based and um, Dawn, the founder there, she's wonderful. We've become really close friends. We worked together with Rescuing Gidget and then uh, we work with Savannah Pig Rescue. Pete came through Savannah Pig Rescue. He was wandering the hills of Naples, New York. We didn't do any rescues together with Tamerlane, but uh, he really hooked us up with some great lawyers and kind of helped pave the way to get everything set up. So it's like, yeah. I, it's cool because we're kind of all in this together. We got another question uh, from one of our patrons. And that Susan, which you kind of you kind of talked a little bit about this, but Susan wanted to know: Do we get any reduced vet costs or anything because we're a sanctuary or a nonprofit? Our vets keep us alive. Literally, there isn't a question that I don't ask. Um, I'm constantly emailing, calling about every single thing, and uh, learning as much as I can. So to answer that question specifically, yes, they all honor our tax exempt status and specifically like specialty, um, avian specialty care in um, Clarence, New York, the where we take our birds. They're phenomenal. And I think they give us around, it's like 30 or 35% off of our bill for all of our birds and, um, and exotic animals. So like if we were to take guinea pigs in, uh, they would also treat them. They're wonderful. The Valley Equine Clinic, they, you know, they work with, with the horses, the pony, um, the the donkeys, they're also wonderful. They give us a, a, a small discount. And of course, Pumpkin Hill right up the, the road. He's fantastic. I mean, he's practically our, he is our neighbor. And at any point in time, you know, he can come down here if we've got at any our, point in time that that could be what Christmas Day, New Year's Day, what Easter, it could happen. <laughs> we have, like every holiday, something happens and we have to call somebody. It was Christmas Eve, and he he came out to that's what it was. check on Sophie this year. Um, she we had just gotten Sophie, I think like 12 days before something like that, and and she she really wasn't eating, and and she was kind of acting funky, and so he came out to just check on her and make sure everything was okay, and um, because she had just gotten a bunch of um, vaccinations as well, so he came out to check on her. I really appreciate you taking the time to like meet with me. I miss you so much. I, I'm sorry that work is so busy. Um, but you know, I, I could just pick the farm up and bring it to you and be like, you got it for this week. Smash it together. So we just all <laughs> live in town. A huge shout out. And thank you to all our patrons that, uh, that support us every month. I'm going to list the names in the descriptions below the YouTube video for the people who gave me, uh, a permission to post their names. I didn't get permission from everybody yet, but I'll, I want to do more of these if that's okay with you. Definitely. Uh, is, um, it gives us a chance to kind of like see each other's faces and lets everybody know how the farm's doing because this is why I post videos on YouTube is because I want to raise awareness of Mockingbird. I want to help spread veganism and show people how easy it is to be vegan. And yeah. and you're just a fantastic human being that the world needs I to know. And also like, 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 no, happiness makers exist and we have to share them. Uh, and they come in human forms too. And that's what you are. So, um, but I, try. <laughs> I just want to say one thing about Do it. our, our patrons. Oh yes. Please. I can't please. say enough about how much that does for the human anxiety here on the farm. Our, uh, donations, you know, that's really our only consistent form of, uh, of income for, for feed and, and stuff like that. And, and we've talked about this. We, we go through about a thousand dollars worth of just like feed alone a month. And like, I think right now we're bringing in just a little over 300 a month, uh, through Patreon. So you can imagine how much we need, we need to be fundraising every month to be sustainable, let alone to get a lot of the projects done that we have to do. So I just want to no, Since that's you know that's great. Thing. I mean, it, check check out the Patreon site because uh, you can donate as little as a dollar. Listen, I, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for taking the time and uh, John. We'll we'll see you soon. I miss you. <laughs> All right, bye, Janelle. <laughs>